Mark 14 this is the Lord Jesus speaking just on the day prior to his death in actually in Jewish calculation of time they calculate time from 6 p.m. to next day 6 p.m. So when he took the last supper at about say 9 p.m. and he was crucified the next day Good Friday by 3 p.m. and he was already in the tomb before 6 p.m. on Friday. So during one day he fulfilled all what the Old Testament said about the Passover lamb dying on that day. So in the Israel everyone prepared a Passover lamb for a family each but here was God's lamb giving his life for each one of us everywhere in every nation that was ever born. So for his preparation to have this last supper with his disciples, he said this strange thing in Mark 14 and verse 13. He sent out two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. We know in all Asian cultures it's the lady who carries the pitcher of water. But here was a gentleman who was so gracious serving his family. So it's an apt description, an apt picture of what the children described of Ranjan serving so much. Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying, you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. Wherever he goes in, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared, made ready for us. So this gentleman just gave the best room in his house for the Lord Jesus. Ranjan, I feel this is what you did with your life and of course with Cynthia supporting. You gave your best, your best room, your best years, your best effort, your best talent for the master, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our upper room, the best that he has created in us that we can give back to him. You have done that, I thought. And this upper room became famous. Jesus came back after resurrection to this upper room and it was also the upper room to which, in which the church first was seen on the day of Pentecost with tongues of fire coming and the worldwide movement of Christianity began in this little upper room which this man gave for Jesus to go out of it and die. And we know we don't like to give rooms where that upper room would have been known forever as the room from which Jesus went out and died. Then people would have imagined that there are ghosts in it where he went out and died. But in fact, this room became the room where Jesus came back. And it's a much celebrated upper room. You have a devotional called the upper room world over. People took this title for intimate Christianity, a moment with Jesus. And whenever Christians everywhere take the communion, they remember the upper room. What one man gave from his house, the best kept chamber. So today we can draw a lesson from Ranjan's life and also from the scripture to give the best we have to our God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I like to read this blessing and conclude. Kamal, you, while we were in Chilau, the, what happened really made our decision to come out of the professions and serve God. Hiranthi suddenly passed away. We were in Chilau, but we had come for a, I had come for a EB exam, you know? Yeah. And I remember I had to cram up my Tamil so I, they said, uh, what, do you have, what did you have for breakfast? I said, pan, mm, jam, mm. He said, that's wrong. That's not how you say it, pan, um, jam, um. For the first time in my life, I failed the exam, the EB exam. Next time I had to go again with a little, but the gentleman was okay and he passed me. So while we were in Chilau, I had come down for this EB exam and 
Hiranti sadly said she, she went missing. We were in a house in Rajagiriya, uh, someone else's house, and when I looked for her, she was not there. Couldn't find her anywhere. To see she had collapsed in the bathroom, fortunately the door was ajar. So I managed to get inside and drag her out. She was already fainting, carried her, put her on the bed. She was very cold, clammy, white and she said my chest is tightening and she collapsed. So I was dressed to go for this EB thing and then uh, I did not know what to do to bring a person from Rajagiriya to Colombo <laughs> hospital at that time would have been difficult. Uh, I started crying then we had an aunt with us and she went to call our pastor at that time he was the judge of the Supreme Court. Uh, so by the time he came it took some time she, she was pulseless, no breath, cold, clammy, white like a sheet. She was just a cadaver. So my hand was on her right radial pulse, I was on her right side. And then, uh, nothing, no breath. Then uh, this judge of the Supreme Court came, he s s s sat on the bed on the left hand side, put his hand on her head and said, Satan, you can't have this life. You can't have this life. I was crying. I did not know what to do. Uh, then uh, it took some time and Hiranti says at that time she saw me crying and she said it seems Lord Jesus give me another chance. I will serve you. After about five minutes of this gentleman going on saying you can't have this life. I found the right radial pulse very feebly returning. Then she became pink, color returned, became warm. Then she, after another bit of time, took a breath. Then only I realized she had stopped breathing. But for nearly seven, eight, nine days, she couldn't get off bed. She was very, very weak. Everything had to be done for her. Uh, that was July 24th, 1980. And I disappeared from medicine, 1981, in February. Now you know the reason, yes. Uh, so this is the blessing, Ranjan, that I want to read with you, read for you. Psalm 92, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. You know, palm tree grows erect. And palm trees grow very well in deserts, isn't it? Palm tree knows to find its water and preserve its water. I feel you have been like that, preserving whatever the Lord has given you. Righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. And palm trees bear fruit all their life. That's the nature of the palm tree. And the fruit they bear in older age is sweeter than the fruit they bear in younger age. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Cedars are the highest growing trees in the mountain ranges of Lebanon. They grow at high altitude. And they also, the, the older the tree, better the smell and also better the, the, the grain of the tree. And they grow ramrod erect. This is about cedars of Lebanon and righteous flourishing like a palm tree. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So it is good for our life to be planted in God's house. We are assured of continuity and prosperity all our days. They shall still bear fruit in old age. So at 60 you are getting ready to bear fruit that you have not borne before. And we will be always fruitful, always fired up and never hoping to retire. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. That's very nice, isn't it? They shall be fresh and flourishing. Age will not catch up on us and this is a promise that in, into eternity we go fresh and flourishing. To declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock 
and there is no unrighteousness in him god bless you